Hi there, and welcome. My name is Dr. Cyanide, and this is my overly intricate Iron Man project. Last update, I worked on this, a forearm rocket launcher. And I made this rough prototype as a way of physically testing what worked, what didn't, and to make a better design that I hope to make. So today, let's make this, let's assemble it, and I'll let's head over to the workbench and I'll just show you what I've been working on. So here is the schematic that you'll notice the, while the last one was perfectly circular, this one has more of an oval shape that ideally is to fit my arm better. And the tighter it fits to my arm, the more space there'll be for electronics. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a trade-off because that will cut off some padding or some room for a long sleeve shirt, but we'll test that later. Other, um, you can also see the curvature there where it goes a across the top. Um, that should be more easy to see when we actually make it as opposed to when we're looking at the 3D files. Um, the hinges are also better designed, that they should open up more than the previous design did. And I've actually included latches on the corresponding side. Again, this is hard to see on the 3D model, but let's uh, actually, I think we're probably past the usefulness of the 3D model already. Let's go ahead, set this aside and start printing. And while we're printing, let's talk hardware. The, for this project, I'm using M3 screws. I have 12 of them, and I've all got 12 M3 nuts. Uh, the threads on these M3 screws are 10 millimeters long. They're a pan head Phillips. I don't think that'll matter too much if you're following along. The, and then I have two springs that I'll use to hold the latch in place. These springs are four and a half millimeters in diameter by 16 millimeters long. Um, the print is already done. Oh, yes. Uh, the other thing we need is the, the filament uh, rivets. You can find a lot of tutorials on how to make these. Um, basically, you just take a strip of um, your filament, you cut it down, you heat up the end, you stick it to the table, and then I found it better to slide it against the table rather than trying to pull it straight up. But you can try it yourself and see what works for you. Now, all the parts are printed. I need to get rid of the supports. I'll just snap them off. I'm not Thanos, so I still have more than half of my parts left. Um, the Let's see. I guess let's start with the latches, or the hinges themselves. Now, one thing that's important to notice when you're building this yourself, there's a small circle here, and that circle lets you know which side is the bottom. These parts aren't exactly symmetrical between the two sides, so it's very important you don't mix and match, You don't ha um, that you get them uh, with the two circles on the bottom. You'll overlap them so that they f form in one line too. Um, I'll just take a few of these rivets, put the small rivet through first, And then let's take this one. The larger of the two frames is what I refer to as the elbow frame because it goes near the elbow. And one thing that's important to note in this design is there's a larger rectangular hole on one side and a smaller rectangular hole on the other. This is where we're going to be putting our nuts later. And the large hole goes towards the center, towards the rockets. So in this case, the large holes are here, it'll go towards here. Um, for this step, that's not overly important, but I figured while I've got it out, I may as well show it. And you're going to um, connect one part from each hinge arm to each side. So there's one, one hinge arm is connected at the top, one hinge arm is connected in the slider. Do the same on the other side. A 
one hinge arm on top, one in the slider, and then that comes together nicely. If you if it's not closing nicely, look for um, support material that's stuck in here. I have had other prints where that was an issue. The and then when you open this, you'll see that it doesn't open right on top of the existing part. There's a bit of a gap. That gap will let us put a skin over this uh, whole assembly later without the hinge crashing into it, which will be good. Going to do the same thing for the next part. So we'll once again take the two hinges, overlap them, stick the pin in between, grab our mid frame and it's referred to as the mid frame well I guess let me point out on the mid frame there's this perfect circle which is very different than the everything else where everything else is a little lumpy a little oddball shaped this is perfect circle that's because in my end design I want to have a sliding joint on this circle um, when you look at your arm let me unbutton the sleeve there for a sec. When you look at your arm, when you rotate your wrist, your elbow doesn't actually move. So I want to enable you to still rotate your wrist to greet someone or to strike a menacing pose. Um, but because the elbow doesn't move, the rockets over here shouldn't move. So you can always keep them oriented the right way. So this will accommodate that. That's why this is called the mid frame. Um, the mid frame, that part, that ring will face forward. And just like on the other, just like on the elbow frame, the wider slot will be towards the rockets and the narrower slot forward or outward. With the elbow frame, it's going to be very important to, or excuse me, with the mid frame, it's going to be very important to have the um, flush rivets on the slide, or on the um, on the part with the rage, raised circle. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little tongue tied here. And the reason you want it that way is so that you'll have nice, smooth sliding joints um, when we get to designing. My goodness, I'm having issues here. Let me try the other side first. There we go. The, um, can't remember if I already mentioned it, the, these indents and combined with the sliding rivets should provide a nice flush surface so that there's no snagging so that when we do make the, or when I do get around to designing the, um, wrist sliding portion, it should go nice and smoothly over it, not snag, which will be great there. That took a little too long. So we'll have this part and this part. Great. Now the next part I want to tackle is the latch. And before I get too far into it, I want to say that I have already, while preparing to make this, had to realize that there's going to be some changes I need to make. I couldn't find, um, I guess I'll start with the intention. So the latch idea is that I was going to thread a piece of string around this little hook and that that string was then going to run down this groove and then it was going to pop out this hole. And I realized that, like I thought I could just do that easily, no problem. Um, I'm realizing that it's going to t actually take some effort to find a good thread to do that and that I'll probably need a bigger hole. So 
it was too late to do it um, for this video, but that's in lieu of that. I'm going to actually make sure that I have a way to pull on these and I'm just going to slip a twist tie onto each of them so that I know for certain I can pull it off later or open the latch later and I'd it's not a bad idea to do this for your own design especially do this before you fully assemble and try it out because you don't want your arm to actually get stuck in this <laughs> you want to wait out of your suit at all times um, after that there's a big hole in the bottom you're going to stick the 4.5 millimeter spring in there and it should stick out nicely and there's a corresponding groove let me line it up with the camera there's a corresponding groove circular groove in the part itself so that spring will go in there and you just have to i think going in spring first and then moving it in and you'll see it naturally wants to rest there which is good um, we can then put this pin in the bottom uh, indent. This bottom indent is the one that really matters. The this other these other two indents right here are to help give structural strength to the three D print. That you'll notice these tabs. Let me see if I can get a good angle. You'll notice these tabs are very relatively small. And the layer lines are going this way. So it's going to be very fragile there. To help strengthen it, I have a hole that goes all the way through. And I can shove a pin through. And that pin is going to snag on the rest of the part and help make it much more secure. And should help prevent it from just tearing clean out. Because that would be bad. And sometimes with these filament rivets, they just don't want to go in a certain part, either because the plastic was slightly bent uh, or some other feature. So just feel free to make another one. It's usually easier than trying to force that one to work. Okay, so now oh, I should I should twist it closer to the neck of this and then That'll work just fine. It's decently tight and then I can pull it and it'll slip right out. Let me make that same tightening up here. And then I can spread that loop. All right, let's grab the other spring. Shove it in. And look for the hole. In there and spring first and oh, is that going in this one's a little bit more jumpy it seems it wants to push its way out that's okay does it oh, I lost the pivot for this top one I will get that back in after I get the spring locked down because I know that's not going to go anywhere but this this pivot might and I re I regretfully did not put the indent on this side so you can feel the difference but it's not too bad all right before this gets away unfortunately it's a lot harder to get the rivet back in the middle I think than to just do it at the first but that one actually went in okay oh, it fell out again that's just going to be a problem with that rivet um, it'll keep falling out so that's exactly why you would want to heat it up and get that locked in nice and tight 
I should probably do that because I suspect if it's happened that many times already, it'll probably happen again. I might actually, just for the short term, I think I'll take my pliers and see if I can just flatten it down a little bit on the tip and see if that'll make it a little bit less likely to slide out. We'll do a test um, hinge so it's nice and latched and then I can pull that and it'll rotate right out. Perfect. So I have two sides. Next up is um, actually figuring out which of these panels. Um, these panels will eventually have the servos on them. If I pull out a servo. Oh, yes, I have one here. So if I pull out a servo, you can see that the width of this is almost perfect to accommodate. Let me hold it. You'll see the width of this is almost perfect to accommodate the servo, a servo arm, and a and potentially a little push rod. Um, that's what I designed it for, so it would just barely be kind of the minimum width that you could get away with. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that on one end and one end only each of these panels have a letter. Now that letter tells you which position they go into. So you take your elbow frame and you orient it so that it's like this with the sliding pins in kind of the northwest direction. And from there the first slot up here is going to be A. And the A will fit right in there and it'll um, and we're just going to go clockwise around A, B, C, D, E, F. So we know that actually I, I was looking at that and I was thinking man that looks funny why does that look funny? Well this is the wide slot this is the narrow slot it doesn't go in the wide or the letter is facing outwards so again we rotate it so that that's this slot is in the northwest corner and then there we go you can see that fits a lot nicer that looks much better this is the correct slot so we know from here a b c d e i think i got confused earlier and was looking at this slot here which is to allow servo cables to be pushed through at a later date. Don't get those two mixed up. One tapers in and is for nuts. And the reason there's the hole in this backside is so that your nuts don't get stuck, that you can use a tool to push out the nuts if they do get a little stuck. So right here, we'll orient this. And actually, I think I'll open it up. So I know this guy is A, uh, that guy is A, goes like that. And I have a small little screwdriver, nothing fancy, but it'll get the job done. These panels um, are one thing that I'm not certain I like about the design. For starters, there's no great orientation to print a lot of them. Um, most of my support material was in trying to hold these up to match the intricate curves. The other thing that I don't like about them is that um, I all of them are so different from one another that it's going to be difficult to uh, make the rockets themselves in any, in any sort of uniform way. Um, as a, So from this side, it would a, go A, I guess let me rotate around. It would go A, B is next. So I've got part B, and that will go right here. Um, that I guess that kind of, oh yeah, the other thing that's nice, these um, panels have indented or uh, counterboard screw holes, 
which I did that so that it won't, you won't have screws digging into your skin if you make this. The, I guess this um, curved idea kind of lends itself well to the idea of sticking as close to the skin as possible. But it does have the drawback that you can't, um, you don't have uniformity in parts. That was the one big advantage that the other one had. We're on C. That the other one could mix and match. If you broke one of those rockets at assemblies at a convention or anything of that sort, you could just go print out or bring in or print out another one and you would be all set. You could swap it out, get back on your feet, get going. These ones you'd need a separate assembly for each and every part and that just is a lot less maintainable. I do not like that at all. So I suspect based off of that that unless this fits really really good that I probably am going to want to strike something that's a middle ground between these two designs. Now I didn't the forms that I got to make these um, we got D um, I just kind of did my best estimation that I took a piece of paper and I traced my hand from the side, or my arm, traced my whole arm from the side view and from a top view. So once, once with my arm laying like this, once with my arm laying like this, and I rotated my body to make it a little bit better. But that, um, and then I took the, that sketch and I measured it out. And that gave me some nice, uh, and I measured it out in, I think I did 30 millimeter chunks. That gave me kind of a cross section grid that I could then put into Fusion 360 in order to, there's E. Um, with that grid, I was then able to make a form that more or less matched the curvature of my arm. And I guess when we get this all assembled, we'll see how accurate that that approach was. If you had a 3D scan of your arm, that might work better. I tried using photogrammetry, but I my first approach, unfortunately, was on, over floors that were similarly co colored to my arm. And so it didn't pick up my arm at all. And then my second attempt, the photogrammetry software just kept crashing and so I decided I would just do the simpler approach. Okay. So this is halfway through. Um, I'm not sure if this whole building it in pieces approach it, as a live demo is relaxing instructional to help keep you from making common mistakes. I can review common tripping points as I make it, which is nice. Okay, again, we're going to do nut side down. So I think what'll make this easier, I'll have to keep it open so I can unscrew everything. But I think this will just slot in like that. So let's put in all of these screws first. All right, the nuts, not the screws. Okay. We know that we're lined up part for part. Yeah, there, that's sliding in. And then this guy slides in. Okay. Starting to get a feel for how this will actually look. I 
again, it's one thing to see it in CAD um, where everything is perfect and everything looks like it'll work. And it's another thing entirely to have it physically in front of you and be able to say, gee, that looks a little thin or a little flimsy or no, that actually held up better than I thought it was. Um, so far, I've actually been kind of impressed with these hinges that they look very, very, very flimsy. But they've actually held up surprisingly well in my tests. Um, so I will certainly take it. There is obviously the chance that when I get the full rocket assembly on them, that that may be more weight than they can effectively bear. But for right now, they seem to be doing just fine. And it could be that there's a better approach to putting these together. Maybe it would be better to put together each side of the frame, the top side and the bottom side, and then um, and then put the hinges in. I'm not sure, but this approach seems to be working. And this, especially um, down the line, should be fairly modular, should be fairly repairable that if any of these break, well, just like I can get in there right now with this screwdriver, I'd be able to get into that in the finished costume. That I can, that your arm has to fit in here. This is the service mechanism. You can unscrew any one of these panels and remove it. Um, and the other five should hold the frame just fine. Uh, is that? That should be good. Last one. Okay. There we have the forearm assembly. Not too different from the hologram. Now the only thing that remains to be done is to actually try it on. So pull these out and should be able to just set my arm in there and push it closed. All right, that is not too bad. It's still a little loose around the midframe, but that could be supported with some padding. Um, sorry, I'm, let me swap back. To, so that isn't half bad. It's a little loose, especially when I go like that, it wants to wiggle all over the place. That might be solvable with some padding. That might be solvable with the wrist. I know the wrist is going to have a bit more padding. I'm not going to be able to wear my watch during it or with it. Um, it feels okay, fully extended. Um, some parts I definitely way over measured. There's a big gap here. This very curved part does not need to be so curved. Maybe someone with bigger muscles than me needs it that curved, but I do not. Um, not bad, not bad. Um, and then of course, you gotta be able to pull the latches and get through. Um, like I said, I wanted this to have strings running through here that would end up popping out of these holes and that there would be a Bowden style tube going between the two. Um, the idea 
being with using a cable there instead of like a micro server or some or servo or something like that is that with cables you can run them up in such a way that worst case scenario your suit runs out of power you can pull or I imagine the cable running up the arm all the way around the shoulder and under the shoulder pad so in that case I could have a loop there I could reach up I could pull on the cord and that would undo that would put tension on all of the latches that would open the suit I could get out even if there wasn't power. I w would obviously like that latch to have servo power so that I can send a command and the whole suit will open up um, or unlock at least, but I need a manual way to do that too. But this is actually pretty good that this um, I might make a few changes down the line, but I think right now my next focus is going to be on this wrist lighter part. And feel free to share if you have any ideas for what I can do. Actually, what I should do is in addition to making the, um, like it's going to be really tough to thread that at a diagonal, I just realized. It's one of those things where it looks perfect in CAD, but not so perfect in reality. So I think I will extend that all cut all the way so it's straight over the hole. And that way I can just go straight in. I'll have an easier time seeing what I'm doing and getting it. Um, the other change I thought while I was assembling, yeah, is I should probably do a similar thing over these hinge joints is, um, is make it so that either from the bottom side or the top side it's just a straight shot all the way through so that you don't run into support material um, buildup like I had on one of my tests. Um, but I think I think this is a good update. I'm pretty pleased with the design. I I might end up revisiting it at some point, but I think it's been a great proof of concept. It latches, it's wearable. I'm happy. Um, if you liked it, like, leave a comment. Uh, I'm going to be making a thread on the RPF. Let me know there if you want um, any more detailed uh, advice or if you have detailed questions that can't fit in the YouTube comment section. Um, yeah. yeah, don't forget to follow your dreams. <laughs>